keeping it a bit of a tune today. Um, I did do a base run on this the other day, um, and from memory, it made 327 point something kilowatts at the rear, tip, rear wheels, um, which obviously for a standard car is pretty good. Um, I've, now that I've had a chance to actually have a look at the tune, um, it was actually pulling a little bit of spark in the top end, so I'm not expecting huge amounts of peak power gains from the tune. What I am expecting is quite a lot more mid-range. I mean, arguably doesn't need it, but the mid-range of this car was heavily held back by torque management as well as ignition. Um, so we're hoping to see a nice flat torque curve, um, but also fuel economy. So they, these are on pig ridge from the factory, like really rich, um, for one reason or another. So what I'm hoping to do as well is increase fuel economy um, by regulating that. did have a, a problem with this on the dyno the other day where there's a condition that's quite widely known as rich after reflash which is basically there's a correction table in the ECU that corrects for injector tip temperature and long story short when you re reflash the ECU this injector tip temperature gets reset and from that um, oh, I should plug in my wideband. From that, the ECU resets it at coolant temperature, which is way higher than it normally would be. Therefore, it runs unbelievably rich for a while. Um, so, yeah, basically, you have no hope of tuning it for a good 20 minutes after starting it. Um, and as I said, this should have been solved by the uh, injector tip temperature offset table that HP tuners provide, um, but it wasn't. So I've been talking to HP tuners about it. It's not an issue that they've seen before, and they're working on it, but for now I'm just going to have to make do. Um, I'm going to attempt to tune the entire car without reflashing it. We'll see how we go. That probably won't happen, but I'm going to just keep reflashes to a minimum, and we'll see how we go. So just, add, just so you guys can see, this is the HP or VCM scanner. So this is what I look at when I'm tuning a car to actually monitor what's going on. Um, so at the moment, in here, no, this is just a particular offset table for short-term fuel trims. But down here, I've got all my um, PIDs, they're called, um, that I want to log. So whatever it is, I'm just keeping an eye on the engine. And then when I'm actually tuning the car, um, obviously I keep an eye on these, and this is what I use to help inform changes that I make to the actual tune file because when you're reflashing these you can't make um, changes on the fly so just as an example this is what's called your VE table or virtual VE table in the newer GM PCM so that's what's controlling fueling in conjunction with the mass airflow sensor and if we go back to our scanner you'll notice that this table that's logging up here, I've made exactly the same. So I can easily correlate the two and work out what the difference is. I don't know if you can see that from here, but down the bottom of the dyno screen, it says status and it currently says red hot. I'm actually just, I'm not sitting against the retarder at all. I've got the dyno off, I'm just letting it spin. Um, I mean, these are cooled by the dyno physically spinning. So I'm just letting it cool down. I can even smell it in here. Even the GTS is quite warm. 127 degree oil temps. Wait a bit longer, I suppose. All right, we're just in the fun stage of the tuning now. So I'm just flashing another calibration to re-enable the mass airflow sensor. I've actually already done one power run. Um, I won't say anything about that yet, but basically I'm flashing our what might be my last flash um, I'm gonna do another power run or two and then when I'm happy with it I'll reveal the results I'm um, surprised actually so it's only been uh, 
two hours, not even. Um, and to get the results that I'm getting already um, is really, really good. It shows a lot of capability in this engine, even with the stock tune. So give me a minute and I'll get through to that stage and we'll have a look. All right, let me show you what we ended up with. If I can get out. Turn this fan off so you can hear me. So, there we are, the results are in. So basically having a look at the graph, obviously, I mean, the easy thing to see is the, the peak power number. So we've gone from 328.5 kilowatts, which is what we made originally on the stock tune. Um, we've gone to 341.7 kilowatts and that was actually fractionally heat soaked because I did about five runs in a row there um, So as you can see really really good game. We're talking sort of 12 13 rear wheel kilowatt gain But the best bit is yeah sure it's up here But there's a nice gain in power the whole way through the rev range as well as a really nice gain in torque the entire, entire way through the rev range and this is also running um, almost one full point leaner um, Actually a little bit more than a point leaner than it was from the factory. Um, so I think fantastic result. And for what is a completely stock engine, I'm really impressed with that. So guys with your LSAs, even if they're completely stock, get them into last minute racing and we'll um, extract a bit more performance out of it for you and get you better fuel economy.